This is the standard switch and this is the switch OLED. But the question is, which one should you buy? And is the OLED really that much better to justify the price difference? Let's take a look at both and see which one is best and more importantly, which one is best for you. So let's get into it. So both the Switch and the OLED Switch has been out for quite a while now, but a lot of people still wonder whether they should buy the OLED model or just go for this cheaper standard model since there isn't a difference in performance. But let's take a look at what makes them different, which one I would buy, and then of course why you may not want to buy a Switch OLED. So let's start off with the first major difference and that is the screen upgrade. And as the name says, the Switch OLED now comes with an OLED screen. But wait, that's not all. It also comes with a 7 inch display compared to the 6.2. And even though that may not sound like a big difference, it is fairly big if you place them next to each other. And since the Switch OLED isn't that much bigger than the standard model, you actually get less bezels on the side, making the console look a little bit more premium as well. Now, since the display is bigger, but it's still outputting at 720p, you're actually getting a less sharp screen compared to the standard edition. But since you get a lot more contrast and vibrancy in the OLED display, it does look better for me, in my opinion. And the OLED screen can actually give you better battery life in darker games, since it doesn't have to light up all of the pixels, meaning in essence, it is just saving battery on the display itself. And this is also the point where a lot of people hate on the OLED, and that is because of OLED burn-in. Now, when it comes to OLED burn-in, it is definitely a risk that you can run into with an OLED switch, but I feel like a lot of people tend to be too scared about it. Wolf10 recently made a video on how he left an OLED switch on the same screen for 7,000 hours, and even though the display did have some burn-in, it wasn't even that bad after being on a stationary screen for over 7,000 hours. Now, in general, if you're a one-game type of person, that tends to play the same game over and over and over for hours on end, and it has some sort of UI that's always on the same place, then you might have a bigger chance of getting OLED burn-in compared to someone else that plays a lot of different games where a lot of different parts of the screen will be lighting up at different times and you don't always have the same spot being lit all the time. Now, if you are option number two, then of course you will be able to play the OLED switch for years to come without a drastic risk of getting any burn-in, but of course, even if you play one game, there's still a chance that you might not get burn in. But there's also the chance that you might still get it. So it is a risk that you might have to take. Now, the display wasn't the only thing on Nintendo's mind. And throughout the console, you can see many cosmetic changes, like, for example, the vents on the top being smaller, the Switch logo being smaller on the back, and even the new kickstand just makes the OLED model look more premium. And they didn't stop there. Nintendo also improved the slides on the side of the Switch to more securely fit the Joy-Cons, making them fit tighter and less wobbly than the previous model as well. Now, as for the kickstand on the OLED Switch model, you do have a full-size kickstand instead of just a small piece on the standard one, which does make it a little bit more sturdy. And you can also do more angles than you could on the previous model, making it a little bit more flexible to use while in tabletop mode. Now, you can still find the micro SD card slot below the kickstand as you did with the standard model as well, which by the way, you should just buy in generic instead of going for the Nintendo licensed one, which are a fair bit cheaper than the Nintendo ones, and they all work the same, so you don't have to worry about that. Just make sure that you buy the micro SD XC, as those are the only ones that actually work on the Switch console. And then as far as the onboard storage goes, the OLED does come with 64 gigabytes, which is double that of the 32 gigabytes that the standard model came with, meaning you won't have to actually run to the store to buy an SD card as quick as you would with the standard model. Now, if we stay on the console itself, other changes include the speaker location, which on the OLED model now are located below the screen, pointing at you, which makes the audio sound better and louder since they are pointing towards you compared to the standard model where the speakers were at the back, pointing away from you. Now, if you prefer using headphones compared to speakers, then the Switch OLED now also supports Bluetooth headsets and it makes it really easy to connect any headset of your choice. And it also means you don't have to go out and buy different headphones just for your Switch and you can use any Bluetooth headset that you already have on hand and just connect it directly to your Switch console. And then the dock also has a few changes with most importantly being the cutout at the back can now be completely removed. And once you remove that, you actually now found an ethernet port, which will allow you for better and more stable connection when using the Switch in dock mode for online play. Now with all those changes, Nintendo decided to keep the battery 
and the performance the same. Now, as mentioned before, the OLED model can be a little bit more efficient in darker titles just because of how OLED screens work. But apart from that, if you buy the standard or the OLED model, they both have the same performance in games. They both have 720p displays and they both still output at 1080p when connected to a TV. But now the question is, should you rather go out and buy the OLED model? And if you have a standard model, should you then upgrade to the OLED model or not? Now, in terms of whether or not you should buy the standard or the OLED model, I would say go out and buy the OLED model. And the reason is it is overall a better feeling console and it has a bunch of features and qualities that the standard one doesn't. And for the price difference, it will definitely be worth the extra money. Now, should you upgrade if you have a standard switch? Probably not, but I do feel that the changes can justify an upgrade. And if you can sell your older Switch console to make up some of the money of buying a new OLED model, then it could definitely be worth it. Now, if you're someone that mainly plays in dock mode, then stick to the standard edition as the performance is exactly the same and you'll get the same performance when you output from the dock in both the standard Switch and the OLED Switch. So save a little money there or just don't make the upgrade as you won't really feel the difference when you're doing that unless you're playing a lot of online titles. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, leave it down in the comment section below which one would you prefer between the Switch Standard and the OLED Edition. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below as well. And then, as always, until next time, cheers.